Hey family. So you know, I a couple of years back in 2014, I started listening to Amos Wilson. I was disheartened when I discovered how long he had been deceased. Um, at that time, um, it was about a year prior to him being uh, or returning home to the ancestors. It was about 20 years. So it was about a year from being 20 years. The man had a way of thinking and looking at psychology that was dynamic. In 2000 and 15, um, when my education really accelerated, I started thinking about what was really taken away from us. This occurred in the spring of 2015. What was really taken away from us when we lost people or when they returned home, like Amos Wilson and John Henry Clark? And how them being removed, returning home at the time when they did, which was um, the mid-90s, uh, how that really deprived a generation of a method for thinking through uh, problems and thinking through um, arguments that stopped them from falling prey uh, to white supremacist tactics to to cause us to really um, fight with one another and deteriorate into arguments that did nothing but limited our capability of working together towards solutions against um, actions that the broader white society might execute against us in order to not only deprive us deprive us of things that we need but also to cause us such harm that uh, we we may become mortally wounded on an emotional psychological or spiritual level um a sp and and by the way this isn't about the collective here this is more for individuals becoming mortally wounded but uh, but that mortal wounding might not even be noticed for years until it had really uh taken a toll on such numbers where um it's difficult it would be difficult for us to actually uh, build support towards solving racism, white supremacy amongst ourselves. As I watched Amos Wilson and I absorbed some of his teachings, what what was absolutely evident was uh, his concern for black well-being and his absolute disdain for the society which was criminalizing black people and was using terms and phrases which they claimed was out of a overt way of caring for us, but was in fact ways of uh, describing us in ways that would be destructive to us. One such term, and he wrote a book on this, and I actually bought the book. One such term was black on black crime. Now, he 
in multiple videos, throughout multiple videos, but there is one specifically where he talked about this notion of black on black crime. And he absolutely eviscerated it. Absolutely eviscerated it. Where he said, among other things, that one, people tend to commit crimes against those who they are in close proximity with. Black people are in close proximity to other black people. Therefore, crimes that they commit will be against other black people. White people are in close proximity to white people. Obviously, their crimes, therefore, would be against other, mostly other white people. Uh, we're not talking, by the way, about collective here. We're talking about individual. Secondly, he made a point of mentioning constantly that a society that pillaged, raped, and murdered its way across a continent would then see it necessary to uh, to label violence wrought from poverty and anguish and the suffering of racism um, problematic. And not only problematic, but they won't address it. They won't address it. Now, from his very brilliant way of um, approaching black on black crime, I add this small little tidbit of observation. I am hearing many non white black people talk about black on black crime and how black people do not care about black on black crime. Now, this is amazing to me because being a person who pays attention to the media, this specific argument, that argument that black people will will riot protest show up in huge numbers to criticize white people who have killed or injured black people individuals usually white people who are either vigilantes themselves or working with law enforcement or working within law enforcement that argument didn't start with black people. I specifically remember the argument being crafted and propagandized by conservative media outlets in 2015 after, after Michael Brown's death and um, may have been a couple of more Tamir Rice than them, but it became the mantra for white America via conservative outlets. The mere fact that I am seeing black people repeat this talking point, including a man who I respect immensely, Dr. Boyce Watkins, but the mere fact that I'm seeing this It tells me that there is a sharp disconnection between the work that some of our greatest ancestors have done and the work that certain people who claim leadership positions, rather local leadership positions, regional leadership commit, uh, uh, positions, state leadership positions or national leadership positions, the work that they're doing 
isn't grounded in the revelations of the previous generation. They're not taking into account what some of the elders had discovered back then. And I believe the reason why this is occurring is because so much of the current um, movement for black justice is wrapped up in an economic theory, which is based on capitalism, which in its theory and in its structure is built on the concepts that feed racism. And if you have an economic system, which which, or, or excuse me, an economic philosophy, which is helping you build an economic system for people who have been oppressed. But within that, that philosophy, there is a reliance on the same theory and philosophy that has caused oppression within that people. You are not going to be able to uh, develop a, a a counter, or not even a counter, you're not going to be able to develop the necessary mechanisms to see the problems in cultural arguments that, in fact, aid in that oppression. This idea that Black people do not care about violence that is occurring in our community that is one that that occurs between one black person and another black person completely skews the point or not even the point skews the reality of crime in general black people do not make the guns that they use to kill other black people with where are those guns coming from we will say Obviously, well, there's an underground and there are some people who can get to the underground and they just bring guns in that way. Hmm, maybe. I recount to you a story which a former gang member told on a show a long time ago. I don't even remember when it was now. I think it was. Now I don't even want to speculate. But, um, by the way, good documentary on the Bloods in the Crips. Bastards of the party. Bastards of the party. Anyway, this gang member said that him and his friends would be out on the streets at night and they would pass by a known uh, alleyway. There'd be nothing suspicious in that alleyway. The next morning they'd come by and there'd be a box full of new shiny guns right there. Where'd they come from? In fact, for those of you who are fans of uh, hip hop, real hip hop, classic today, hip hop, what used to be called old school hip hop, had to do, by the way, with. Uh, well, never mind. Um, you may remember in the late 80s through the very early 90s when the crack epidemic really started catching fire. Black musicians were singing about the realities of things just seemingly appearing in the black community. So. Who was bringing in the guns? It wasn't black people. We know that. But beyond just the guns, we know that uh, the Contra, the Iran-Contra scandal, pumped billions of dollars of crack cocaine into the black community. We know that. We know that the crack epidemic was facilitated by the federal government. It was so well known even before Gary Webb wrote his articles and his book that literally 
you can find it on my my page here. I uploaded a song by MC Hammer called Living in a World Like This. And even MC Hammer put it in his song that he knew that there was other people bringing in the crack cocaine to the black community. We are not having the conversations that we need to have about crime because we are having conversations and arguments about black on black things when we need to be asking the more important questions. How are these things getting into our community at this time and what is actually causing the uptick in violence? It is not just suddenly, randomly, black people losing their minds. It's time we understand that there is something greater, something malevolent that is happening in those cities. There is something that is causing these things to happen. And it is time that we understand that. For much of the last four years, I have concentrated wholly on or mostly on the occult. I've concentrated on the metaphysical because there were things that needed to be flattened out and smoothed out and, and explained greater. But I think um, from this point going forward, there are logical things, non-occult things, philosophical things that need to be discussed. I don't know if I'll do that every single uh, day, but it is something that I am going to strive to do more of because, ladies and gentlemen, we have problems. And these problems are going to have to be solved through psychology, sociology, philosophy, and hardcore logical information. I am not against occult works, and I obviously will periodically still touch on it. But these people are ratcheting up a game. It's clear. And Amos Wilson warned us about that game. Let me get his book quickly. All right, family, I'm back. This is the book that he wrote, Black on Black Violence by Amos Wilson. And I will tell you, the, um, the subtitle is The Psychodynamics of Black Self-Annihilation. The Psychodynamics of Black Self-Annihilation in Service of White Domination. This is a powerful book, y'all. This is a powerful book. Get it. There is a lot that must be covered and reconstructed over these coming years. Uh, I am motivating myself to do more work on black consciousness building and on helping develop information that is going to help you develop the way you see the planet and the world. There are things that will touch, um, most things I do will touch race, but there are other ways, there are other things that we must prepare ourselves to understand, which is how class works, which is how we have a lot of work to do. Let's, let me just put it that way. 
If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. Always remember to subscribe. Hit that like button. Leave a comment, guys. I know I don't say all these things enough, but I'm saying it here. I'm your brother, Vimeer Dees. Get this book. Peace.